Hi everyone, it's Deirdre. I wanted to give you the update on my Millennial Research Passion Project, which I started about six months ago. And every week I've been speaking with millennials. And I am learning so much about what they expect and what they care about and what they want from the business professionals and the leaders that are around them in their lives and in their careers. So I'm here to share some of the things that they don't like and how you can change that and what you can do in your communications, all in an effort to build better relationships. This is all about emotional intelligence uh, and understanding that it's the emotional intelligence and the EQ side of the house that actually will get you farther in your relationships. And it's not that you're going to uh, change all of those other great characteristics that you have, the strength and the confidence and your ability to uh, be a leader, your professionalism, your knowledge, your innovation, and your vision. It's that so you can apply emotional intelligence to make all of the other characteristics stronger and stand out. So let me tell you a little bit about what millennials don't like. It was loud and clear uh, over these months that they don't like when leaders communicate and they just show up with their messages about products and policies. They want their leaders to be real and to be human and in order to build a relationship, sometimes you have to give your opinions and to take a stance. How do you feel about certain causes, uh, which, which is tough because there are going to be sticky situations when you're going to have to step back and, and think about the stance you're taking and your customers and all the different people that you're affecting. But millennials, they want you to take a stance. Uh, it's time. And this is a way to show that you are more human and real to them. Another thing is they definitely want you not just to listen, but to actively listen. What does this mean? Well, you can listen just to be moving to your next message or thought, or you can actively listen by probing with more questions, uh, thoughtful questions that show that you're actually getting a deeper understanding of what someone is saying and the information is resonating. Sometimes when we're in person, uh, it's really good eye contact and the ability to take notes, let somebody know that you care about what they're saying and you're not just moving on to what's next on your agenda. When you're actively listening, it's also the your ability to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. It's deeper understanding and compassion and empathy, which millennials are looking for. Millennials also, um, they said quite a few things about leaders that um, made me certainly take pause after 30 years in communications. Leaders were disingenuous. They didn't like leaders who showed up full of hot air with their passive aggressive tones, um, the fighting style. Uh, this does not sit well with them. So part of communication uh, is good judgment. And of course, is ethics and being truthful and accurate in what we say. I would recommend that everybody gets a little refresher course on Ethics 101, uh, which certainly is all about your good judgment and the decisions you make in communications. When it comes to ethics, there's no shortage of resources. PRSA has a code of ethics, IABC, the American Marketing Association, um, I'm even going to plug a course that I did on LinkedIn that was all about creating a, a culture of marketing ethics. Uh, so look into ethics if you have any questions about that, because that's going to help the way that you show up and the way that you're perceived by millennials or, or any, any group that you want to build a relationship with. And lastly, we have to uh, really go out there and show our passion and unleash the love. Millennials point this out um, quite a bit 
when they feel like that it's a one-sided conversation, that you, you're not out there responding and showing how much you care, care for a cause, care for something that's going on, uh, care and kindness about something that they're passionate about. All of this boils down to um, what I'm building. It's a model. And what I'm recommending is that you feel first before you communicate. I've done 30 years of strategy and planning and relationship building and creating impact and business value. But I'm realizing the ability to feel first will get you to stronger relationships and unbreakable bonds so much more quickly. Feel stands for face your fears, which means you have to be open to different perspectives, of course. Engage with empathy. That's that understanding and compassion that you need, and you get that through your active listening. You have to always use your good judgment and ethics. And lastly, unleash the love. Because if you don't, why would others join you and your cause? Show the love, and that really resonates with millennials. Well, I hope that this information is helpful and I will keep you posted on all of the information that I'm learning from my millennial friends. Thanks.